Welcome. Today, we'll be looking at generation of electricity um, from a Caribbean perspective. And by that, we mean looking at the sources, the primary sources that are used for um, generating electricity within this region. Now, electricity generation is produced when there is relative motion between a magnetic field and conductors. This is achieved using a generator where a rotating axle, which we call the field, cuts across stationary coils. Now, <clears throat> that's not necessarily what is shown in, in the diagram. However, the basic principle is highlighted. That is, there is relative motion, relative motion, between the magnetic field, this is our magnetic field, or that produces our magnetic field, and here's our conductor. So <clears throat> the generation will be produced whether I rotate the magnetic field or I rotate the conductors, which is why we use the term relative motion. Now, in our diagram, we're showing here that this motion is being produced by hand. However, in a regular generator, that is where the main um, difference exists for the various systems. So let us take a general view of what a generation system looks like. Once we have that rotating action, or should I say that rotating action is produced by some mechanical system. In thermal systems, that is systems where the generation is provided or produced using heat, right? So in thermal systems, the mechanical systems are either um, from an engine or a turbine. So we can have an engine coupled to a generator that causes the, the rotation, or we have a turbine which is connected to the uh, generator. Now, the generator remains the same, meaning coil, magnetic field. That does not change. So the distinction that we make in giving generators their names is based on the fuel that is required to provide this rotational force. Let's get that clear again. In terms of a generator, the electrical generator, that remains the same. Magnetic field, coils. However, what we use to produce that mechanical input or the fuel we use to produce the mechanical input gives the name of the overall system, generation system that is being used. So here we have um, a steam turbine, yes? Now this steam turbine is basically, or should I say the steam for this turbine is produced by boiling water. The question is, what is it? What fuel are we using? to provide that heat input, which will boil our water, thereby producing our steam. So it is what is combusted. What are we burning? So that the water in the system produces our steam, which then drives our turbine, okay? Uh, for this lesson, we are not concerned about the operation of the system in terms of what's down here. But this section remains the same. Here's my turbine and my turbine, the steam turbine. The question is, what fuel? All right. In the Caribbean, the production of this steam is obtained primarily from fuel oil. And so we call that an oil plant heavy fuel oil, we call that an oil plant. Or we can produce that steam through the use of liquefied natural gas. 
So we call it a gas plant or a biomass plant where, especially in our sugar factories, we may be producing that steam using the, the waste from the cane. So that becomes a biomass plant. And if we were using a nuclear um, plant or if we're using nuclear to produce the heat, then we have an, a nuclear plant. And if we were using coal, then it's a coal plant. So the fuel that we use to produce the heat input to generate steam, which is just boiling water, dictates the name of the generation system. So here is the, uh, an example which shows the production of electricity. And we have simplified it where I need fire. I need something to hold the water. We call it a boiler and represented here by a large kettle. That large kettle produces steam. That steam turns the blades of my generator, of my turbine, sorry, and my turbine drives the generator. Up here, same principle. We're producing steam. That steam is used to drive a turbine. That turbine is used to turn the generator. And of course, we see the stacks here, and that is dependent on what we are we're using. Um, and down here, we're just showing that it, we're using coal. So coal could be used um, for, for, for producing that steam or that heat input for the steam. And then we come here, coming from the generating plant, we then go to our substations, right? Um, we go to our transmission system, Right, that's where we operate at high voltage, come back to another substation. And then this is what you'd see on the road, which would be your distribution system. And it comes into our homes where we consume that electricity. But that's not our focus today, but we know how we get that light. Now, the alternative electricity production method would require the use of internal combustion, combustion engines which I use to directly drive the generator. So instead of creating that turbine or having that steam which drives the turbine, which drives the generator, we could have an engine that is coupled, directly coupled to the generator. Um, and these engines can be powered using oil, just as with our steam plant, yes, still a steam plant, but an oil-driven steam plant. Or we can have natural gas, so instead of using it to boil water, we simply use it to drive a generator. And of course, we can use diesel. So we have a diesel plant, which would drive the um, internal combustion engine, yes? And here's that setup. This may be something more akin to what we would see um, in a small business, or maybe, maybe in our homes, okay? So all of this would look like a large truck engine. Yeah. So that's a large truck engine. And back here, that's our generator. All right. Now, remember, the principle is that we have a rotating input for our generator. So we can use renewable systems to produce or provide that rotation, yes? And given that broad principle of having the rotational input, we can get that from wind or hydro. For the wind, here we have a cutaway of that large section of, our, of, of the wind turbine that we really don't see. And this is, that section we call the nacelle. Yes? In that area, we still have a generator, which is magnetic field and coil, and we need rotational input. So the rotational input comes from the wind, which causes the blades to turn. And of course, you have some gears. In some instances, you know, um, the, 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 there is electronic control which manages the speed that goes from the blades 
to the generator. So the wind energy is captured by the blades of the turbine, yes, and that produces the rotational force to the input, to the, to the generator. And one of the things I want to mention here is that sometimes the blade um, seem to be turn, turning rather slowly, but the gears coupled with electronics control provides um, a steady um, rotation to our generator. And this is a um, section of the Wigton Wind Farm um, in Jamaica. So all that we just discussed in terms of the gear, the, the generators, etc., would be in that section, which is our nacelle. And all of that is then connected in the substation of the wind farm. Okay. Now, hydroelectric systems utilize kinetic energy from water flow. Again, the objective is to provide the mechanical input. And this is coupled with the generator, thus providing our electrical energy. So similar to the wind, similar to the thermal systems, we can capture that water, whether by dams, so we can have our dams, or we can have regular run of the river system. So that as the river flows, it will be um, channeled into the, the, the hydro facility. But what we are showing here is where we have dam. So we have a dam, we have dammed the water, and then we manage the flow of water and note that it narrows as it goes to the turbine and it turns the turbine. So as the water passes the turbine, it turns, provides the mechanical input to our generator. And once again, we are producing electricity, which we um, increase the voltage through a transformer for the transmission system. So students, that's it for generation of electricity. But in summary, Generation of electricity requires relative rotation between a magnetic field and conductors. The rotational action is produced by some mechanical input. The mechanical input is derived from turbines, engines, or naturally occurring elements, such as wind. Where steam turbines are used, the fuel required to produce the steam, or boiled water, dictates the name given to the generating plant. And of course, naturally occurring elements that, that are used for providing mechanical rotation are water and wind. I thank you very much for your attention.